بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير خلقه أجمعين محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين My dear viewers, respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته One of the factors that indeed enables the human being to live harmoniously in society is their relationship with their neighbor, with the people that are adjacent to them as far as their place of residence is concerned. The Quran, the teachings of the Holy Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt, peace and blessings be upon them, have not in under any circumstances ignored this issue, but rather have placed much emphasis to keep in the minds of believers the issue of looking at the responsibilities associated with being a good neighbor and highlighting what needs to happen in order for us to take care of their uh, neighbors and the position that they occupy as well. In the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah An-Nisa, chapter 4, verse 36 says, وَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا وَبِذِ الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ Allah says, worship him and do not associate anything with him and be kind with their parents and uh, virtuous as well as those who are relatives, the orphans, the poor. وَالْجَارِ ذِ الْقُرْبَى وَالْجَارِ الْجُنُبْ and the neighbors who are relatives and neighbors who are close by. Now, this is clear instructions not to take the matter of neighbors lightly. Allah says, be kind, be generous, be magnanimous, be uh, a good role model as far as uh, the relationship with the neighbors is concerned. Uh, the narration of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam says, ما زال جبريل يوصيني بالجار حتى ظننت أنه سيورثه That Jibreel kept emphasizing the importance of the neighbor to the extent that I thought that they will be included amongst the inheritors and the ones who will be uh, entitled to inheritance from the people. Such was the importance. Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace and blessings be upon him and his progeny, says, Allah Allah fi jiranikum fa innahum wasiyya tu nabiyyikum. That uh, make sure that you look after your neighbors because they have been emphasized by the Prophet, peace be upon him, in his wasiyya. Or at least he has emphasized the, the need to look after them. In a beautiful narration in the book Makarim al-Akhlaq from the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, حُرْمَةُ الْجَارِ عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ كَحُرْمَةِ أُمِّهِ That the sacredness and the sanctity of the neighbor up over the person is like that of the mother of the, over the son. Such is the focus and notice the uh, delicate comparison there. Once there was a man who was a neighbor of Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam and he put up his house to be sold for a hundred thousand dirhams and uh, somebody asked him but the value of the house is approximately thirty thousand and why is it that you've raised it to such? He said well because my neighbor is Jafar al-Sadiq and hence I've raised it to that level. Why? Because a neighbor like Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam will treat anyone righteously in uh, with respect yes whatever has happened um, you see the imam alayhi salam forgiving and so on and so forth and that's why the amount indeed was raised imam al-sadiq himself says husnul al jawar yazidu fi rizq being respectful um, and dutiful to neighbors increases sustenance husnul uh, jawar yu'ammar al-diyar wa yazidu fi al-a'mar it helps with the um, uh, prolonging of one's life. And the Quran tells us, you know, even 
there's a distinction between the jar, the, the neighbor who is from the family, and the jar who is not. And the distinction is just that, that, that we know that the family comes first, but the one who is not, there's no specification whether they are Muslim or not, whether they are from a particular denomination or not. That's a key thing to understand, especially given this day and age whereby the reputation of Islam and Muslims is under scrutiny and that people have questioned, you know, the qualities of Muslims, that they only see the negative side of Muslims. They don't see the positive as much. The media focuses by and large on the negativity associated with Islam. They have really looked at only a few individuals who have hijacked the teachings of the religion of Islam. And therefore, importantly, the role for the Muslim anywhere, especially in the West, becomes quite crucial, especially the image that they're giving to their non-Muslim neighbors. What kind of uh, picture am I portraying of Islam and especially as well the followers of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. Um, the Prophet of Islam is narrated to have said that من كامنا يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فلا يؤذي جارة Whomsoever believes in Allah and the Day of Judgment must not hurt their neighbor. And he was asked one day that there was a lady who performs her prayers and she fasts during the day and, and stays at night with ibadah, but she deliberately and continuously torments and is disrespectful to her neighbor. The Prophet, according to the narration, says, he finnar. Well, she will get punished for that. It's not sufficient to say, well, you know, the ibadah is personal choice, but the acts of worship should reflect in the behavior of the individual. A true mark and the measure of whether the salah, the psalm, the ibadah, the ziyara, the devotion of Ahl al-Bayt has really impacted the individual and has been accepted is whether it has positively improved our akhlaq, if it has made our conduct much better than what it is. That's why Imam al-Kadhim sallallahu wa sallam alayhi says, لَيْسَ حُسْنُ الْجَوَارِ كَفُّ الْأَذَى To be a good neighbor doesn't mean that you just simply uh, avoid to hurt or to disrespect or to somehow um, not be uh, a good neighbor to the to your own neighbors but walakin husnu jawar as-sabr ala al-adha but to be patient over what they do as well i mean today people complain that you know the uh, neighbor there's noise there's sometimes issues out there we have to exhibit and display as much patience as possible once a prophet of islam sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam um, was approached by an individual who said, I really have bad neighbors. What do you advise me to do? What can I do to deal with this issue? The Prophet of Islam says, be patient across three days. And if nothing happens, on the, then on the last day, take out your belongings from the house and put it in the middle of the road. He said, really? He said, yeah. And on the third day, of course, nothing happened. And then this person took out his stuff and put it on the middle of the road. People asked, his neighbor inquired, and he said, look, I'm unhappy with the way things are going. He drew attention to that. He put pressure on his neighbor, and things were sorted. So sometimes it needs this kind of action. If patience is not resolving the matter, if we cannot communicate with the neighbor and ask them politely and with courtesy, um, with respect, at all, if at all possible, to solve the problem between us, then I think that would be a useful um, method of managing any conflict or any uh, misunderstanding. Now, there are narrations that, for example, tell us of the um, rights of the neighbor that uh, they enjoy over us from the Ahl al-Bayt alayhum as -salam. Um, such as Imam Zain al-Abidin alayhi salam, says one of them is حفظه غائبا that if they are away that we uh, look um, to um, protect their house or protect them as well if they're not, for example, um, uh, not here and somebody mentions something about them perhaps even to that extent 
Uh, and this is a nice idea because, you know, what it does is it creates that community cohesion. It creates that spirit of understanding and, and uh, the mentality that, oh, okay, I will be a protector of your property whilst you're not away, you're not here. And this ideally will be also reciprocated and increases the trust that exists between the neighbors. Ikramuhu shahida, he's here. He or she are there. But constantly, you know, to ask about them, to inquire. Today in the West, we have to ask how many of us know the neighbors? How many have had a conversation with them, perhaps even invited them, perhaps have given them gifts or have, uh, you know, visit, uh, asked them to share a meal with us or, you know, um, in the month of Ramadan, presented them with some food as a gesture regarding, you know, this holy month, um, spoken to them about what has been happening, about the beautiful teachings of the religion, just out of a conversation, not with any other intention or any other motive, but with the idea of just simply dispelling the myths and the misconceptions, for example. Uh, they have, for example, certain uh, festivals like Christmas and other things. There is no problem in, for example, congratulating them, giving a box of chocolates or some flowers or things like that uh, as, as just to kind of keep the relationship uh, strong. Third point is Nusratuhu idha kana mafluma, to help them when they are uh, op being oppressed. And this is also a right that exists for the neighbors are concerned. This is crucial because sometimes, you know, houses are next to each other. You sometimes can see things from the other, uh, from the house regarding the other, what's happening in your neighbor. So it is not about, you know, it's about protecting them rather than exposing their secrets or exposing uh, things which are not revealed to others or looking at that which we are not permitted to look at. So to um, be honorable, to be honest, to be honorable and uh, um, respectful is crucial. The fifth is satratu awrata. Sometimes what happens is they may do something, the neighbor may do something, it's unclear uh, to them that it's inappropriate because others may be seeing them or they've done something which are which is not recommended to be done. Whatever, it is important to protect um, anything which exposes them and that's what the Imam alayhi salam wants us to do. Uh, the sixth point is if they want or seek some kind of um, nasiha advice, then you should dig, do it, but not before others, so privately. Can you see all these points by the Imams alayhi salam? It's as if we are talking about believers, but this is for all neighbors, and this is for all kinds of people. It is of importance for us to uh, keep this in mind. Number seven, don't leave him alone at the time of calamity. So be supportive, um, a shoulder to cry on, any help to assist. For example, if uh, the car has broken down or their family member has passed away. I remember recently coming across a story in the, here in the United Kingdom where a Muslim family saw an elderly lady who was in her 90s, she was by herself, they got to know her and they started to support her, help her, um, you know, gradually day to day with certain chores that she became much older. They had a, a birthday party for her and uh, she was greatly appreciative of all their help because her only daughter was abroad. It was later reported in the newspapers here in this country. And when she passed away, they sorted out arrangements for funeral with the family and helped even to bring some family from the airport and attended the funeral. A wonderful example of uh, a family who are neighbors who, you know, did what they can to uplift the example of uh, neighbors, neighborly good conduct. Number eight, to forgive them as well if they have erred. Remember that, you know, as a neighbor is concerned, they are you know, quite close and therefore in proximity. So therefore sometimes they might make mistakes, we might make mistakes, sometimes we might say something, we might not do what we ought to do or supposed to do. 
and therefore there needs to be a spirit of forgiveness, there needs to be a spirit of overlooking the errors and the mistakes. And another point that the Imam Ali Salam highlights is uh, live a noble life, you know, uh, a life of dignity. And today, what the challenge is that the impression we give about ourselves or Islam and Muslims to our neighbors is one that uh, in the future will determine the overall opinion of the community and society about the faith and about the religion. It is not about only what the media is saying, which is sadly negative, or, or about what certain uh, scholars or leaders of communities and mosques, that in itself has a limited role. Each and every individual, certainly uh, in the West and in other places as well, uh, can play their role and can ensure that they do whatever they possibly can to keep the image and the impression and the reputation strong. Because remember, Ultimately, if push comes to shove and people would speak about, okay, what do you believe? What do you think about Muslims? How have you encountered Muslims? And the neighbors and others at workplace and others can come forward and say, my Muslim neighbor is a very good person. My Muslim neighbor looks after my house when I'm away, look, asks about me, um, congratulates me at the festivals and other things. My Muslim neighbor um, rarely, you know, I, could, I, I, I have con causes for concern for them. And the voices out there will overwhelm the negativity that exists out here and there because actions speak louder than words. I remember reading in the United States in the month of Ramadan, an Iraqi family that had come from Iraq and settled in, in America. Um, it was their first Ramadan. They, even their English wasn't as good, but they asked their neighbor to join them for uh, iftar. And the neighbor later actually said that it was the first time that I'm invited to a Muslim's family's house. I thoroughly enjoyed their generosity, their kindness, and you know, we, it even gave me a good opportunity to explore the religion of Islam even further and to investigate, um, you know, uh, how this, what, what the tenants and the uh, foundations of the uh, glorious religion is all about. So it is a great chance as well. It's an opportunity to um, improve the situation as far as the reputation of Islam and Muslims are concerned. The Ahl al-Bayt want us not to be individualistic in our outlook. They want us to think beyond and build society as strongly as possible. They want us to inculcate these values into our children as well, uh, that of love and respect and tolerance, because sometimes it is uh, crucial that we don't uh, overlook this issue and we develop a tendency of uh, thinking far beyond in order to be blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the footprints and the, in, the, in the following of the glorious Ahl al-Bayt We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us in this regard uh, with the uh, shafa'a of the Ahl al-Bayt and for us to be exemplary role models following in their footsteps. Wa akhru da'wana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallillahumma ala muhammad wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahir.